Welcome to a new episode of Behind the Lens. And today I am going to share my thoughts on what the best uh, camera is for vloggers. Now, Sony came out two, three months ago with a new uh, camera, GoPro 9 came out only a few days ago. The Lumix G100 came out, which I actually had and returned. And that also made me think, what is really the best uh, option out there? Yeah, so in this video, I'm gonna run you through what I think is mo most important, yeah, the features of the little uh, camera that I have, uh, some practical examples, some of the accessories you might wanna consider, some of the pros and some of the cons. Yeah, so. so what is really important for vloggers is that the camera first of all is small and easy to port yeah to port <laughs> and it's portable so you can take it basically anywhere and it doesn't take up uh, half a suitcase uh, it needs to be able to shoot video both in 4k and in 1080 uh, hd so basically in hd format you want to be able to record some of the slow motions uh, you want to be able to do some of the time lapses and you also want to take some uh, stills, some pictures with it. Although many vloggers do this on their mobile phones, some people are really into camera uh, photography and that's a good because I'm one of those people. <laughs> yeah. so we'll go into what I think is one of the best but also most affordable options. One of the reasons that I am so much against Panasonic and Lumix is so-called uh, designed for vloggers or vloggers specific is the price point they're 700 euros some of the Sony's let's say more cinematic cameras like the a6600 are way are very close to 2000 yeah they're 18 1900 maybe a bit cheaper but they're very expensive so I really thought like there must be something cheaper out there everybody knows you know their GoPro or their DJI action uh, cams yeah those you can really use for vlogging but they're not designed for vlogging, they're designed for action filming, yeah, whether it's underwater, whether it's on your bike, uh, diving off the plane. So they're very good in terms of image quality, but there's quite a few things that are not so good. So I started to look at some of the uh, alternatives, and about two months ago, I bought uh, the DJI Osmo Pocket. And this is this really small, let me just see, this really small little camera device. So I basically bought this, yeah, this goes at the time for 320 euros and what you get for that is very simple. You get this incredibly small camera yeah, and don't let it fool you. It does have 12 megapixels uh, filming camera. Yeah, it has, it's basically a three axis gimbal. So it's really for uh, filming. It's got a relatively small CMOS sensor, but it does a great job and it supports uh, 4k up to 60 frames per second uh, HD up to 60 frames per second but in slow motion that's up to 240 frames per second uh, um, it has great time lapses yeah you can do up to 30 minutes and you can pretty much choose what your actual shooting rate is uh, hmm. Hmm. I'm actually looking at my notes it's not good <laughs> uh, Again, what, what you will see here, and this is one of, the, one of the great things about this particular gimbal is it comes with a very small screen and if you switch it on, like I'll show you, it goes one, two, three, it shows you the actual uh, way that it configures. And with this, yeah, and this is one of the cool things about this camera, it's not only designed for handhelds, you can also use it on your mobile phone. This is where this little adapter that you see here comes in. And you only need this to actually uh, activate it. And one of the great things about this particular camera gimbal is that it you can use it in two ways. You can use it shooting from your phone, so really allowing far more control from your phone. So you just hook it in here on, on the side, you download the DJI uh, Mimo app and you have full control over your gimbal. Or you can do what I do, is basically uh, walk with it talk talk to it with it and start shooting films it's one of the parts which i find so interesting about this design it's very small yeah it comes basically the only thing you get and this is kind of a downside is your mobile phone adapter which you stick in here and a little protective case yeah, let's see if i'm in focus and you get a little protective case and other than that 
that's it. You're gonna have, you know, you're gonna be able to shoot via your, at least using your phone to control your little gimbal camera, which is all right. It's not my style, but, but it has the few features that I really like. It's small, you can shoot 4K, you can shoot HD, you can shoot HD slow motion, you have time lapses and it takes nice pictures. Not super quality like you have, for instance, on the Sony's or the Canon's because also it's this big a sensor versus those. So that's it. One of the other things as well is it's got a maximum ISO of 3200, which for low light can be a bit of an issue. And it has a, uh, an f-stop of 2.0 as a max. So for low light, it is pretty okay. Yeah, I'm filming this uh, vlog, for instance, at uh, an f-stop of 2.2 with 125 shutter speed and ISO of 500, but this is on the A6400. You don't have that type of control. But anyways, other than that, I think this is pretty awesome. Yeah, and with that, I'm also going to show you a few of the examples. So when we look at the performance of this camera, first here I'm going to show you a shot in uh, 4K and 60 frames per second, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's nice, detailed, uh, very sharp way of shooting. And the great thing here is that this is an additional feature which came out with the updates. When this was first released in 2019, yeah, all you had was this and pretty much auto mode for shooting. So when you went to pro mode, you really didn't have much control of your color signs. Now they've added actually uh, a Cinelite D profile, which is a really flat color profile. For those of you then who are more into filming, this is really cool when it comes to, uh, to that particular feature. Yeah? So So as you can see, that was the 4K 60p. Now we're gonna to go to the uh, HD 1080 in slow-mo. Just a very simple example, because I quickly started to love the slow motion feature there. Yeah, it really is for such a small gimbal, and of course you have the micro jitters and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, but that's also why I think it's such a great little gimbal, because it will teach you how to really uh, improve your, um, yeah, your, ninja walks and all this kind of stuff so there's a little uh, tutorial down here in the link or maybe here you'll see it picking, picking up because much of the filming is a bit like boxing you can have a very hard punch but if you don't know how to use your legs you're not going to go very far yeah so that's one of the few things i like so now we're going to go first into the uh, hd slow-mo then afterwards i'll be back again yeah so don't go and Now, one of the things for the time lapse here is that you can pretty much select the actual uh, via the menus. And this is one of the great things about this uh, camera is that the menu setup is extremely uh, intuitive, as they call it, intuitive. Uh, <laughs> difficult word for a Dutch guy to say, intuitive. Uh, it's very intuitive. So what you normally do is if you go into your little gimbal here, and let me see if I can. If you go to the menus, everything here is vertical. Or horizontal and here you see it yeah I'm seeing it now so you really need to and this is where one of my tips if you buy this really spend some time on getting yourself familiar with the entire uh, gimbal although it's very small yeah, it has no audio port and all this kind of stuff uh, it is packed with features and all of them uh, matter to you as a vlogger so that's pretty cool so we see a little time lapse here
So what do you think of the time lapse? That was actually pretty awesome, wasn't it? It was filmed in the middle of the day, yeah. So all of the footage that you've actually seen here was shot in the middle of the day with the brightest sunlight you could possibly have, and uh, an ND filter on. But later, on, later I'll get back to that. Now, so we've now seen the 4K at 60p. We've seen the uh, HD 1080p at uh 220 or 120 frame rates i'm always getting confused with that anyways the slow-mo kind of b-rollish uh, and now of course and this is one of the most important things i guess for anybody who produces some kind of video material is the audio once the audio is decent you're more likely to keep watching if it's horrible audio you're not gonna you're not really going to uh, to look so i have a few i have one example here where i'm again on this very warm sunday afternoon walking on the uh, plains in a forest, so big open space, bit of wind, yeah, and then you can judge for yourself what you think of the audio. Yeah, so here we go. Now, as you can see here, uh, still walking along, I have to admit that I'm now at arm's length, so I'm not having the double touch, this is double touch. Walking normally, so you can judge for the image stabilization. Uh, I kind of like the depth of field and view behind me. The dynamic range, I think, is pretty awesome on this camera. As you can see, we're going into the sun again. And you see that, yeah, compensation is not the best. I have the ND16 on at the moment, which normally should do the trick. Yeah, and I still have manual control. And it follows me. You see, my facial track is followed, which is also pretty cool. Now, you can make up your mind about this yourself, but I think that an audio was pretty awesome. I ha I really surprised me outdoors. It's probably not the best, and those of you who are really more into the cinematic kind of vlogging will probably dispute that it's not fit for purpose, but I found it pretty okay. I found it very acceptable, especially when you walk through a forest. You can hear a lot of the background noises, the birds, uh, in this case, stuff falling out of the tree because it's nearly autumn. So I pretty much found it very, very acceptable. We go into the next part, accessories. And here, is, accessories. And here is why it's so important, uh, what I said earlier on, are you going to shoot from your mobile phone or are you going to shoot uh, handheld like I do? And handheld is very simple, you do it with one hand, preferably with two. If you're walking like this, yeah, it's, it looks utterly ridiculous if you're walking like this on the street, but please don't hold back because the footage you get is amazing. Um, as you just saw, I find, I find the footage amazing. But one of the things is here, it's very difficult to control this without your mobile phone. So you're gonna need some accessories. And this is the, I think one of the negative points here is that the accessories at the DJI store are pretty extensive, but they're also pretty expensive. Extensive, expensive, pretty okay. So what I, what I first did was um, I bought a bazooka. Yeah, this is a selfie stick with a mobile phone clasp, which I thought was very handy and pretty cool. Yeah, so I thought, oh, this is so cool. And as you can see here as well, I'm trying to get this into the frame. What you basically do, you see the clasp here. Yeah, you see the contact points, which are similar to what you see here on the side. You just click it in and there you go. And one of the cool things about this is that you have a complete control panel here. And here you see the control panel. So you can really control your gimbal, both in vertical and horizontal movements. You can pretty much switch uh, from uh, front fronting, front facing camera into selfie mode. You can control your various different modes you can shoot in. And if you don't like it, you just switch it off. And this all runs on phantom power. And the battery life on this uh, particular uh, little thing is actually pretty impressive. If you see how small it is, you can get an hour, hour and a half in 4K out of it easily. So I found this pretty amazing. So I had this and then I found out that whatever way I turned it, I couldn't connect my mobile phone because I had this nice idea of putting the mobile phone in here, you know, and having the nice looks and actually seeing what was going on or even remote controlling it. And unfortunately, that's one of the things for DJI that I really don't get and one of the weak points. The particular pocket does not come with any kind of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections. 
So that was an issue. And I thought, you know, hold on, I can easily put it here. You can see this is the only, this is the only way you can connect something other than here, any kind of external device. So with that, I thought, okay, you know what? I'll just buy a little mobile phone uh, yeah, kind of cable and you connect it in with your mobile phone. That's one workaround and it's dirt cheap. Uh, the thing is that you're then still doing it from your phone. What you really want to do is have the Wi-Fi thing. So I started looking at, oh my God, I need to buy all these accessories. Another thing which I noticed when I was walking on the, on the street is that once you start controlling this little gimbal from here, yeah, from here, you see what it does? Yeah, that means that every time you use this, you need to connect it to your mobile phone to get your settings across. So with that in mind, you're thinking, hmm, what should I buy? Now, I already have this bazooka here, and it's actually very handy. I can definitely recommend it. It's about between 60 and 80 euros. Yeah, um, but it's, it, it's handy. But sometimes you don't want to walk around with a, with, with a bazooka. So I was really looking at this, so I bought the combo. Yeah, this is called the DJI combo for pocket, which consists of three major accessories. First of all, a GoPro mount or a DJI mount where you can actually, let me just switch it off, the battery is nearly empty. Yeah, where you can basically click it in and to be very honest, it's really designed in a way that is tight as possible. So you can connect it if you're a mountain biking, you connect it here, you can connect it to your helmet which makes this gimbal a lot better. Now, I haven't tested this particular, my vlogging gimbal uh, as such for action sports, simply because I've got an Osmo Action, so I don't have the need for it. Yeah, so that's the first accessory. And I found in the beginning, I really didn't know, should I buy this because this is combo, what do I want with this? Now I'm thinking, okay. Now after a few weeks of testing this few months, yes, you need it. Another accessory, and this is very small, and I, I really don't understand why DJI uh, sells this separately, but okay. This is the wireless, yeah, which allows you for charging. Yeah, so you have the wireless, which is very simple. Click it in and you have a wireless. Mind you, what you still don't have here, what you still don't have is a tripod pod mount, which really is, and you know, all the links are in the description below. There is something you can buy on Amazon for six or seven uh, euros, which you can basically, it's basically a tripod extension you put on here. Yeah, I mean, I really don't understand why the DJI didn't put anything into it. Yeah, so this is one of the great things with the bazooka, you do have a tripod uh, mount. Yeah, so with that, anyways, I have the uh, remote Wi-Fi control now. I have something for my action sports and then I have the famous focus wheel and this all comes into one. We have the famous focus wheel here and when I got this I was a bit skeptic about it but I did the math so I thought okay if I buy the combo it's a lot cheaper. What you basically have here is a button to control your horizontal and vertical axis and then here you go. With this here you can control all your modes and you can switch the camera. So I was pretty skeptical because it's basically the same as I have on the uh, on the bazooka. So I really wasn't 100% sure if this would work actually. And now that I've tested it, I have to say it is something that you really need to have. There is an advantage and a disadvantage on both. The advantage with this is you can really walk compact and it's easy to control. The only thing I don't like is once you switch the axis, when you're walking, you get a micro jitter on your uh, on your camera. That's it. The one thing here is that this is brilliant. The only thing is, which I really prefer on this little wheel, is that you can select your axis. Yeah, so you can really select your axis there. Here, not. So what to, what you will have at times is because it's very sensitive. The bazooka is incredibly sensitive. Once you start going into the focus wheel and you start using this, yeah, because it's not, let's say designed to be purely horizontal, purely vertical, ergo allowing you far more control than, for instance, this small little focus wheel, you will also see at times that you're completely lost. This makes it kind of fun, but on the other hand, it doesn't. Yeah, so this is one of the things that I thought, okay, this is necessary. Now, I've done some 
audio test, as you just saw, I found it acceptable. But in some parts or places, you want better audio. And that's where I was thinking, okay, how do I do this audio on this thing? Because there's nothing there. So here you go again, another accessory. Yeah, and what I have here, oh, I don't know if you can see it. Let me just do it like this. This is a USB-C female audio adapter, which works great on any app on my road. Uh, my road. Uh, you can also use any other kind of uh, audio device. So with that, you can at least have your audio device. And that brings me into my next problem. And that is kind of where the accessories become a bit like, sometimes like a, like a maze or a labyrinth, is that once you have this, and you know, also one thing I found out, once you put it in here, you can attach it into the Wi-Fi remote. And once I switch this on, up right, here we go. But what you normally see here is that the wireless is connected and normally you should see a little microphone popping up here. And it isn't when you put it here. So what you're gonna have is, and this is absolutely ridiculous in many ways, is that you have to put your audio in yeah, and then when you put it here, you get a little, and you can't see, you will see a little microphone, you can use your audio. But then there's a second problem. All the audio that you will attach needs to have some kind of hot shoe. And I've gone over the internet, and the only way I can find hot shoes is in two ways. The first one, if you shoot from your mobile phone, so you really attach your gimbal to your mobile phone, you will be able to use that feature because you can buy a very, it's down in the description, you can buy a very simple mobile phone case with a hot shoe on it and then you're pretty much sorted. Um, and on the bazooka there's one as well, which is incredibly awesome. Yeah, and I'm calling this uh, selfie, electronic selfie stick or remote selfie stick, the bazooka, uh, see it more as an affection because I actually quite like it. And I have to state that the experience of filming with the bazooka or handheld are very different as well. So I really I really like this because you start to get uh, quite enthusiastic about certain things and certain things don't work and you find out something. And that's the other part about this uh, particular gimbal. There is a learning curve. If you just switch it on and think, oh, I'm here, no. You will have to go through the menus. You will need to understand what, what, what you're doing. It's very sensitive in many ways. Although you get this protective case with it, this is your standard protective case. I had it fall twice and all of a sudden uh, I had a problem because the the check when it starts up to check the three axes didn't work anymore. So a little workaround you can see here, there's a little film here. The workaround is pulling this gently up, but very gently, like mostly not pulling it up, but you put it here on the underside and you gently lift it up because I think it's really a matter of millimeters. Yeah, so with that, you'll actually see that the uh, DJI Osmo Pocket is really cool. Yeah, in terms of accessories, we're almost there. But there's one thing. The lens on this camera uh, is pretty good, but it's basically a drone lens. And the one thing that it does is, specifically with a lot of light, is flaring. There's a lot of flaring, and in general, that's not that bad. But also, you'll see that if you're without the ND lenses and everything, this is a set of six different variable ND lenses. They're all done by Magnus. So, you know, this is a can of Coke. Boink, there we go. It's very simple. You attach it and all of a sudden you have it. So it goes from ND4 for morning light to the bright 16 I used to 32. Yeah, but all of this is not free. Unfortunately not. So my recommendation would be if you're really into vlogging, you want something easy to carry around because you can literally put it in your uh, in your pocket, in your bag, whatever you're doing. This is the actual um, device to go. It starts at 320. Now, if you take the combo with it, that's about 100 euros. You'll see it down below in the description. But it's money well spent because it really allows you the opportunity to fully shoot handheld. The bazooka I can recommend for uh, multiple reasons, but it's really uh, whatever your choice is. I don't think you, I, I bought them, you know, in typical me fashion of my own money. I bought them both, but that's me. Uh, if I really would have to state like, okay, what's really critical here, then I would say go for the combo where you get the focus wheel, 
Uh, if you really want an audio enhancement by this little baby, you'll see all the descriptions in the link. And the great thing about the combo is that you also get a little uh, action sports mount with it. Yeah, the Wi-Fi, I can definitely recommend you. If you don't buy this, buy the combo. Yeah, the combo is actually cheaper than uh, buying these uh, things separately. Um, One other thing, and this is one of the great things as well, besides the fact that you can able, are able to shoot in 4K, uh, low frame rates or higher frame rates, the fact that you have a very good capable HD, uh, which you can do in slow motion, you've got your time lapses. One of the great things about this is, and this really sets it apart from many, many so-called cameras for vloggers, there's no recording limit here. So if you have a memory card of, let's say 128 M MB, and your battery lasts, don't worry, just shoot, which I think is a big benefit. The one thing I feel a bit saddened about, and this is also a consideration you need to make. First of all, the design is so basic that it's brilliant. I like simple designs, but the only thing you've got here is one external jack, no head jack. Your card is here. Uh, it's pretty much dust resistant and, and you know splash water resistant, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but I do feel that the accessories itself kind of, you know, and there's a few here. Why should you buy this DJI? Why should you buy a, a Wi-Fi controller, you know, just extend it a bit, make, make it a bit longer or something. Yeah? I mean, okay, who am I? I'm not a designer, but that would actually make sense. Um, I've been looking on the internet for a hot shoe, but there's an ugly trade-off with that. The hot shoes that I found when you film uh, handheld, they all block off this particular part. I haven't found any anything else. Yeah, and if you block off this, you can't use your focus wheel. So that's kind of a dilemma. Maybe you can, I don't know, stick it or you can put it on some other uh, gimbal slash tripod. And that's my other part. No tripod openings. I have on the internet seen a few, uh, let's say, tripod mounts, but all of those require you to do a trade-off again. <laughs> so if you have your audio in, uh, yeah, well, what are you going to do? You have to buy a new tripod? No. Then the bazooka comes in because the bazooka has all these features in, in, in one. So it really depends on what you want to do. And this is extremely light and it's small. Uh, it can, you can tilt it whatever way you want it. You have a mobile phone clasps here. And to be very honest, I think this is a great accessory. The only thing is that it does take away a bit of the, let's say, ease of portability, I guess. Yeah, um, at times this will overheat as well. And not that there's steam coming out of it, but you will feel it heating up specifically after when you do 4K, 60p, it heats up. It takes a lot out of the, uh, out of the battery as well. The battery is easily charged, it takes about an hour from, from a wall socket, so, so that's great. But if I see all in all, if I see that Sony and specifically Panasonic dare to ask nearly 800 euros for a camera which turns out to be made for photographers instead of vloggers, and I would say, this is the best go. If you're an aspiring, aspiring cinematic person, this is also something, that's also why I, why I bought it basically, is to improve some of your legwork and really get some awesome shots in, in the process. So it depends on which way uh, you look at it. There's also a few people where it's not for. If you're a professional photographer and you really think that you're gonna make fantastic stills with this, Think again, you can make some good shots, but it won't be anywhere near a full frame, an APC or a micro four thirds. If you're a professional videographer, well, then you probably have already tested it, but you probably have a lot of things to uh, state against it. If you, however, are a guy like me, who is far more into filming YouTube tech reviews, occasionally going into forest and filming something or maybe some parties or something, then this is perfect for you. Uh, the audio I think is acceptable. The picture quality is picture quality as in video quality is really good. I actually find it astounding. And in a short space of time, I've really fell in love with this particular gimbal, but you will have to put some time into it to actually get familiarized with it. But with that guys, this was my review and my recommendation of what you should buy when you want to be a running gun vlogger. Anyways, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, thank you for all the comments on the previous videos and I'll be publishing 
at least one video a month from now on, but maybe two, depending on my topics. Anyways, thank you very much. Take care. Good night.